Hello, this is Josh Engelbretson from Thunder Beast Games. Uh, we're developing the Atomic Game Engine, which is a cross-platform, MIT-licensed, full-source available uh, game engine that targets Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, and WebGL. Um, we also have support for a number of different programming languages, including uh, C++, JavaScript, TypeScript, and C Sharp. Um, these languages all use the same API, so it's very easy to drop down the native code from any of the scripting languages, and it's also possible to quickly prototype and gain all the productivity benefits of um, the individual scripting languages for whatever purposes you may have. How does that sound? <laughs> so yeah, I'm on the Atomic website right here. Um, if I go over to the GitHub, I have to find my mouse first, and uh, we can just go to the repo here. And so again, this is MIT licensed source code. It's all available here. When you do clone it, do a clone recursive. That'll get your Chromium embedded framework submodule and some other submodules that we have in progress. Um, just if you're going to compile from source, just make sure you do that. Anyways, it, once you do once you do pull it down, um, it's very easy to build on your desktop platform. Um, the Atomic Editor. So basically, to build the editor, uh, we have some root script files here. Um, so on Windows, I have a batch file, and then on Linux and OS X to build the editor, um, it's just a bash script. Um, there are some other things in here I won't go into today, just in the interest of keeping this video relatively short. Um, but yes, there are other scripts and shell um, files for generating like a development. So if you're working on the engine itself, if you're working on the C-sharp scripting itself, or the JavaScript or anything like that, or the editor itself, uh, those would, you'd be, those, you would use those in development. But we just want to build an editor we can use. So I go ahead and I um, double click the batch file and I hit a key and away we go. So what this is doing is it's using CMake. Um, the only dependency that you need to install in your system is CMake um, in Visual Studio, of course. And it's going to run through and build out the editor binary, the deployed atomic player binary, so you can you know deploy games um, and applications. And it's also going to generate all of our script bindings for um, for the JavaScript side and for the C sharp side, and build out our assemblies for the C sharp side. And it does a lot of work. Um, the build is very fast for what it does. Um, I think I haven't measured it on Windows recently, but certainly under ten minutes. I mean, for like everything. Uh, and that includes generating like the atomic tool, which generates findings, all that. So um, once you're actually in development mode, of course, the build is quicker. But from a scratch, totally from source build, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a build, which we're not going to sit and watch on this video. So I do already have it compiled over here. And once you're, once you're built out, if you look in your artifacts folder, atomic editor, uh, so here's all the goodies. We have our Atomic Editor binary. Um, we have some things for our Chromium Embedded Framework. And if I go into resources, we have some different resources for shipping games that are included, uh, like core data for shaders and things. Um, just kind of a quick overview here. If I go into tool data, there's some pretty cool stuff. We have our integrated code editor. Um, if I go into Atomic Net, which is one of the things I'm talking about today, primary thing I'm talking about today, um, we can see that there's a bunch of assemblies and things in here. And uh, so there's the Atomic Native DLL, which is the native code. And then we have the Atomic Net, which basically uh, makes that consumable by the uh, C Sharp and .NET framework in general. Um, we do use the, the .NET framework. Um, we're not embedding Mono, so we're actually using the standard uh, Microsoft .NET, the same thing that... Um, uh, you would use uh, if you're building any .NET thing. So as far as like deployment on desktop and all of that, uh, and your tooling and all that, you're going to be using standard tooling, standard frameworks and all that. Um, once we get over to the .NET C Sharp side on uh, mobile, I believe that we're still we're going to need to be looking at um, some of the Xamarin tools still until .NET Core picks, uh, catches up on that front. So um, we'll see how that plays out. So right now, the, the C-sharp support is very focused on uh, desktop and specifically Windows. The plan is to get it running on OS X and Linux shortly, and then from there, we'll go over to Android and iOS. Um, so let me go ahead and start up the editor. And move that out of the way. 
So what I have here is a, a built editor, and I can uh, make a new project here. And let's go ahead and just make a really simple 3D project, and I'll just call it my video project, since I'm making a video. Um, if I go here, I can actually see that uh, you can just pick a, a standard language for your project. Um, I want to make sure I continue to capture here, so I need to move that window. But Okay, so when I create a project, I can create like the standard language for the project, um, kind of the overall language I intend on using for the project. And so here I can choose JavaScript, TypeScript, or C-sharp. Um, let's pick C-sharp for this video. One thing that's really cool is that you can actually combine these. So in your C-sharp, you can use standard ECMA uh, JavaScript. You can also use TypeScript. And so when you ship your C-sharp or your native application, you can have mods and users that use those languages to extend C-sharp for that matter, to extend the, uh, the, the game. So for mod making, it's absolutely awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and create a C-sharp project. And then I just get some really basic stuff. I get a scene, I get a chest in it. The chest has a component, a C-sharp component on it. Um, I can see what assembly is referenced for that pro for that component, and I have a little spinner thing. Let's go ahead and hit play and just see what this does. Okay, so basically we have a managed player here, since this is a C-sharp pro project. Um, and all it does is it loads up a scene and it displays it by spinning the, uh, the chest around using our component. All right. So one cool thing is, if I go into my components here, I see I have spinner.cs. And uh, what I can do is I can just click on that file, which is going to show off our Visual Studio integration, which automatically generates a Visual Studio project for your Atomic project, populates it with your scripts and things. Um, and we can see this is a very, very simple uh, script. All it does is it takes and rotates or yaws on the node that the component is attached to, which in this case is the chest. So one thing I can do is um, if I go back over to the editor here and I uh, select the chest and I take a look at the uh, component area here on the inspector, I can see that I have a speed field and it's set to three. If I go back to Visual Studio, I can see that right here I do have a field um, and I mark it with inspector. So I don't use like a public field. I don't bastardize anything. I use a, an attribute to, 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 tell, to tell the C-sharp side um, what I'm exposing to the inspector. And there's a lot of different, you can use vectors, you can make references to things. Um, I'm gonna keep this very simple and I'm just going to add another float field. We'll call it speed two and we'll default it to 42. Um, so now when I build this, which I'm just building in Visual Studio, nothing, nothing fancy or anything, and I go back over here, I can see I now have a field that's the default value, 42. Um, the neat thing I can also do is back in Visual Studio, I can set up a, well, I can just play the, I can just go ahead and play the project uh, directly from Visual Studio. And I can set a breakpoint here. And I've now broken on the uh, this line. So if I go ahead and I can edit this, let's just make it a lot faster, save it, and then continue. Oh, I'm gonna need to remove the breakpoint. And then continue. And now instead of just multiplying the delta by 75 or multiplying by 750, but that's in, I can change it back in real time too. So I guess change this back to 75 and then continue. Oops, need to remove the breakpoint. <laughs> and voila, we have a um, we have it back to where it was. So basically, you can edit code on the lot on the fly, um, which is a really productive thing with C Sharp and the Visual Studio tooling. Um, I can go ahead and hit stop here. So one thing I just want to show really quick too is. Um, so I can add new components, like if I do a create a component here, and I can go ahead and pick C sharp. I'm getting a little notification, so I want to join our Facebook group. You can join our Facebook group. It's uh, growing in membership, and it's um, kind of where people can discuss some of the atomic things. We also have a chat channel. Um, but yeah, let's get back to this. Let's let's do uh, let's call it my component. 
And I don't have this all set up quite yet, but if I do a create, it's going to automatically add it. So that was really simple, and it shows up both in my Atomic Project and inside Visual Studio and kicks me over to Visual Studio, knowing I probably want to edit the component. Um, and we'll call it my component. So if I do a build, we're still building and all that. Uh, and I did mention that you can mix languages, so I kind of want to do that quick. I'm going to do a new script here. We'll call it, we'll do a JavaScript. And basically, if there's a, if there's a main.js inside your folder here, it's going to know that you want to execute that at the beginning. That's the entry point. Um, that's another thing to mention about Atomic. Uh, you have an entry point into your program that you define, which is, again, here's like over here in, in C Sharp land, it's the standard static main with arguments. Um, you don't just like load a scene out of nowhere. You know, you you have you define the entry point of your program, either whether that's in C plus plus native code, C sharp, or in JavaScript, which is over here. This here is using the Monaco code editor. Um, I'm going to do something really simple. We do have autocomplete. If you really spiffy, um, that is using uh, again Monaco, which is the same editor from Microsoft's VS Code. This is using our embedded Chromium framework, so you have script editing directly in the editor. Uh, so let's just say hello from JavaScript. And we'll put a little thingy there, a little semicolon. And now when I hit play, we'll just do it from the editor. And I go over here, I'm going to see hello from JavaScript. So that means that we're actually mixing JavaScript inside a managed C Sharp project, which is pretty cool. Okay, so on that note, this, this, Example, you know, this is the, the, the basic example here. Um, let's just kind of have a little fun here. I'm going to open up our new color chooser, and, you know, I can adjust the color of the global white. just want to show that quick. Hit cancel, and it's back to normal. Um, anyways, yeah, so, um, so uh, that kind of, I was talking about scripting. <laughs> when you start messing around with lights, your brain goes in an entirely different direction. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're mixing C sharp and uh, and JavaScript here. Oh, so that's the thing. So this so so this is the basic 3D template. This is just a new project template that gets you a basic scene and things up. One really cool thing is that you don't have to do things quote unquote the atomic way. Um, you certainly can. You can use nodes, components. It's a very powerful uh, type of idiom. But check this out. So if I go ahead and if you go over to the to GitHub again, you can see that we have an atomic examples repo. Um, this is a separate repo just to kind of keep the repos sane as far as the assets and resources and things. Uh, so we don't just have this like, ginormous repo with all the examples and the atomic engine and editor. Um, so if you pull this down, uh, there is a atomic net folder. And so I'm going to close this project. And then I'll go and I'll navigate over here to the uh, repo that I recently pulled down. Um, so there are a number of examples here. Some of the examples, when you download the binary app to site, they're included. Some of these aren't, so there are some additional examples here. And I'm going to go and open up our Atomic Blaster example. So the cool thing about this is that this example doesn't use nodes or components in the, like the classic scene graph. What I did here is I, I, I actually ported a XNA slash model game example um, to Atomic, and it was very quick to do. Um, one thing I'll do here is I'll just crack open, um, let's see, like our player ship. So over here, again, I'm inside Visual Studio, and oh, I better close this one out because that's our other one. So I'll crack open our, our player ship. Um, and uh, I can do a build here, and boom, we built it. <clears throat> I can do a play. And yeah, so this is basically kind of a geometry wars. Um, there's some information about the XNA project that, are, that I included inside the sources and things. So the cool thing is, is that you basically have free reign. Like you can use low level custom rendering. You can drive this any way you want. And you can see that the this is 100% C sharp. Like all the particles, the grid background, um, everything is being gr driven in C sharp. There is no uh, native code doing that. Um, behind the scenes, of course, the, some of the rendering is going to be, well, all of the rendering is going to be native code. So um, this is a very high-performance example. Um, and again, it's using, like if I go here, um, what I did is this is all standard XNA code, basically. 
for the entities, entity manager, all those things. And then what I did is I wrote a custom renderer that basically just kind of um, mimics the XNA batch renderer. <laughs> so it just renders everything in batches and kicks them out, um, sets up some basic graphics things and all that. And then again, I can go here and uh, let's just go for when a black hole spawns, okay? So let's see here. Uh, so here's the constructor. And if I set a breakpoint and I start debugging, let me trade the right key. And I can be running around here and we should get a black hole spawning pretty soon. And they usually spawn much sooner than this. <laughs> Murphy's Law, right? All right, so there we go. We just hit a break point. This is when our black, our black hole is spawning. We can, of course, step through. Oops, yeah, and I, of course, entered a key here. We do not want to edit and continue. <laughs> hey. All right, so basically, I can step through. Um, you know, let's break on the update. All right, so I can step through just like any, uh, any code. And I have all my locals and all my debugging information here. So it's all very much just a standard C Sharp project. And in fact, I can just hit stop here. Um, and then if I go back to the editor here, you know, I can just hit play from here as well. There's nothing real, oops. There's nothing real fancy going on um, as far as uh, um, it being tied specifically to Visual Studio. And one cool thing here, probably in closing just for today, is if I go ahead and I do my build settings, I can see that I've got my Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, WebGL. And if I do a build, I can just go ahead and go out to my desktop here, let's see, and I'll just call it, I'll make a new folder called My Builds. And we'll do a build. I open up the folder. Now this is actually a managed project. So I have all the um, Atomic Net stuff. And there we go. I just deployed a uh, standalone C Sharp project from the Atomic Editor. And it's running beautifully. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to cover today. Um, in a future video, I'd kind of like to get into some of the uh, more low-level stuff that you can do as far as setting up a work environment and hacking on Atomic itself. But um, but yeah, until next time, this is Josh Engelbretson from Thunder Beast Games. And uh, go ahead, check out Atomic. It's over on the AtomicGameEngine.com, www.AtomicGameEngine.com. Cheers.